Okay, today I'm going to be putting together a storage shed, more aptly called a shed in a box because it comes in a fairly compact box from the tractor supply store. And that of course means there's a lot of assembly involved. I picked this shed in a box for $169 and its dimensions are 6 feet by 6 by 6. The instructions are completely pictograms without any words at all, which I guess is the manufacturer's way of eliminating the need to write the instructions in different languages. The box contains a bunch of tubes to create the framework, the tarp-like covering, some ratchet-style tie-downs to keep the tarp in place, and some auger-like anchors to keep the shed from blowing away. We've got beautiful 100 degree South Texas weather today, so I'm hoping to get this shed put together as quickly as possible. You would think creating the framework would be as easy as putting together some Legos. Unfortunately, it was anything but easy. The rods slide in very easily, but don't snap in, so they slide out just as easily. That made it very frustrating. Fortunately, I had my son Christian available to help me stabilize the frame. In addition, you need to make sure the framework is lined up perfectly, or the tubes will not slide in all the way, and you'll end up getting a hammer out of desperation to get the job finished. From the pictogram instructions, it was a little hard to see how I was supposed to put the tarp walls on. I didn't get it right the first time, but finally figured out that you need to wrap the tarp over the tubes for it to fit correctly. Uh, what, what, what? Aren't these supposed to go into those holes and then you put in these? Here I'm inserting some bungee cord ties that came with the shed. They keep the rolled up door secure when you want it to stay open. The side bracing tubes slip into a sleeve and add extra support. These braces are used to attach the side supports to the framework.
Okay. Okay, finally done. This was not straightforward. You would think it would be, but... So they have pictograms in the instructions, but it really needs some wording in there because some of that just is not intuitive. And uh, I had to do things over several times on different areas because it just didn't work. Uh, so anyway, here it is. And so we got the bars that are supporting along the sides down here, on both sides. We got two ratchets, one for the front and one for the cover, because they're two, they're separate. So anyway, the only thing that I haven't done is uh, use the tie downs for the ground. It has like some augers, but I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. I think I might use some stakes and find a way to do it that way. The augers can be a pain in the butt. And I wanna make it semi-mobile. So here is a look at how big it is and how tall it is. I'm six feet tall. And so it's right there uh, with my boots. You know, I'm a little taller, but this gives you some idea of what to expect on size. And that was about two hours, not one hour, in hot sun again, because we're down to South Texas. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. This was more of a how-to video with some things to watch out for if you decide to put together one of these sheds. I'm also getting a field trimmer soon. With all this rain, the grass and weeds are growing like wildfire. I might put together a video of the field trimmer in action once I get it. If you haven't subscribed yet, you might consider doing it. Not for me, but for the welfare of the one-winged butterflies. They're in desperate need of help. Until next time, make sure you brush your teeth, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.